David Warren Brubeck was an American jazz pianist and composer, considered one of the foremost exponents of cool jazz. Many of his compositions have become jazz standards including In Your Own Sweet Way, and The Duke. Brubeck's style ranged from refined to bombastic, reflecting both his mother's classical training and his own improvisational skills. His music is known for employing unusual time signatures as well as superimposing contrasting rhythms, meters, and tonalities. Often incorrectly attributed to Brubeck, the song, Take Five, which has become a jazz standard, was composed by Brubeck's longtime musical partner, alto saxophonist Paul Desmond. Appearing on one of the top-selling jazz albums, Time Out, and written in 5-4 time, Take Five, has endured as a jazz classic associated with Brubeck. Early life and career Dave Brubeck was born in the San Francisco Bay Area city of Concord, California, and grew up in a city located in the Mother Lode called Ione, California. His father, Peter Howard, Pete, Brubeck, was a cattle rancher. His mother, Elizabeth, who had studied piano in England under Myra Hess and intended to become a concert pianist, taught piano for extra money. Brubeck's father had Swiss ancestry, and possibly Native American Modoc lineage, while his maternal grandparents were English and German. Brubeck did not intend to become a musician, but he did take lessons from his mother. He could not read music during these early lessons, attributing the difficulty to poor eyesight, but faked his way through well enough that his deficiency went mostly unnoticed. Planning to work with his father on the ranch, Brubeck entered the College of the Pacific in Stockton, California to study veterinary science. He switched his major to music at the urging of the head of zoology, Dr. Arnold, who told him, Brubeck, your mind's not here. It's across the lawn in the conservatory. Please go there. Stop wasting my time and yours. Later, Brubeck was nearly expelled when one of his professors discovered that he could not read music on sight. Several others came forward, arguing that his ability to write counterpoint and harmony more than compensated, and demonstrated his skill with music notation. The college was still concerned, and agreed to allow Brubeck graduate only after he promised never to teach piano. After graduating in 1942, Brubeck was drafted into the United States Army, serving in Europe in the Third Army. He volunteered to play piano at a Red Cross show and was such a hit that he was spared from combat service and ordered to form a band. He created one of the U.S. Armed Forces' first racially integrated bands, the Wolfpack. It was in the military, in 1944, that Brubeck met Paul Desmond. After serving nearly four years in the Army, he returned to California for graduate study at Mills College in Oakland. He was a student of Darius Milhod, who encouraged him to study fugue and orchestration, but not classical piano. While on active duty, he received two lessons from Arnold Schoenberg at UCLA in an attempt to connect with high modernist theory and practice. However, the encounter did not end on good terms since Schoenberg believed that every note should be accounted for, an approach which Brubeck could not accept, although according to his son Chris Brubeck, there is a twelve-tone row in the light in the wilderness, Dave Brubeck's first oratorio. In it, Jesus's twelve disciples are introduced each singing their own individual notes. It is described as quite dramatic, especially when Judas starts singing, repent, on a high and straining dissonant note. Jack Sheedy owned San Francisco-based Coronet Records, which had previously recorded area Dixieland bands. In 1949, Sheedy was convinced to make the first recording of Brubeck's octet and later his trio. But Sheedy was unable to pay his bills and in 1949 gave up his masters to his record stamping company, the Circle Record Company, owned by Max and Saul Weiss. The Weiss brothers soon changed the name of their business to Fantasy Records. The first Brubeck record sold well, and he made new records for Fantasy. Soon the company was shipping 40,000 to 50,000 copies of Brubeck records each quarter, making a good profit. Dave Brubeck Quartet in 1951, Brubeck damaged several neck vertebrae in his spinal cord while diving into the surf in Hawaii. He would later remark that the rescue workers who responded had described him as a DOA. Brubeck recovered after a few months, but suffered residual nerve pain in his hands for years after. The injury also influenced his playing style towards complex, blocky chords rather than speedy, high dexterity, single note runs. Brubeck organized the Dave Brubeck Quartet in 1951, with Paul Desmond on alto saxophone. They took up a long residency at San Francisco's Black Hawk nightclub and gained great popularity touring college campuses, recording a series of albums with such titles as Jazz at Oberlin, Jazz at the College of the Pacific, and Brubeck's debut on Columbia Records, Jazz Goes to College. When Brubeck signed with Fantasy Records, he thought he had a half-interest in the company and worked as an A&R promoter for the label, encouraging the Weiss brothers to sign other contemporary jazz performers, including Jerry Mulligan, Chet Baker and Red Norvo. When he discovered that all he owned was a half-interest in his own recordings, he quit to sign with another label, Columbia Records. In 1954, he was featured on the cover of Time, the second jazz musician to be so honored. Brubeck personally found this acclaim embarrassing, since he considered Duke Ellington more deserving and was convinced that he had been favored as a Caucasian. Ellington knocked on the door of Brubeck's hotel room to show him the cover and Brubeck's response was, it should have been you. Early bassists for the group included Ron Crotty, Bob Bates and his brother Norman Bates. 
Lloyd Davis and Joe Dodge held the drum chair. In 1956 Brubeck hired drummer Joe Morello, who had been working with Marion McPartland. Morello's presence made possible the rhythmic experiments that were to come. In 1958 African-American bassist Eugene Wright joined for the group's U.S. Department of State tour of Europe and Asia. The group visited Poland, Turkey, India, Ceylon, Pakistan, Iran and Iraq on behalf of the U.S. government. They spent two weeks in Poland, giving 13 concerts and visiting with Polish musicians and citizens as part of the People to People program. Wright became a permanent member in 1959, making the classic quartet's personnel complete. During the late 1950s and early 1960s Brubeck cancelled several concerts when the club owners or hall managers objected to presenting an integrated band. He also cancelled a television appearance when he found out that the producers intended to keep Wright off camera. These albums were also known for using contemporary paintings as cover art, featuring the work of Joan Miro on Time Further Out, Franz Klein on Time in Outer Space, and Sam Francis on Time Changes. On a handful of albums in the early 1960s, clarinetist Bill Smith replaced Desmond. These albums were devoted to Smith's compositions and thus had a somewhat different aesthetic than other Brubeck Quartet albums. Nonetheless, according to critic Ken Dryden, proves himself very much in Desmond's league with his witty solos. Smith was an old friend of Brubeck's. They would record together, intermittently, from the 1940s until the final years of Brubeck's career. In the early 1960s, Brubeck and his wife, Iola, developed a jazz musical, The Real Ambassadors, based in part on experiences they and their colleagues had during foreign tours on behalf of the Department of State. The soundtrack album, which featured Louis Armstrong, Lambert, Hendrix and Ross, and Carmen McRae was recorded in 1961. The musical was performed at the 1962 Monterey Jazz Festival. At its peak in the early 1960s, the Brubeck Quartet was releasing as many as four albums a year. Apart from the «College» and the «Time» series, Brubeck recorded four LP records featuring his compositions based on the group's travels, and the local music they encountered. Jazz Impressions of the USA, Jazz Impressions of Eurasia, Jazz Impressions of Japan, and Jazz Impressions of New York are less well-known albums and they produced Brubeck standards such as, Summer Song, Brandenburg Gate, Koto Song, and, Theme from Mr. Broadway. In 1961, Brubeck appeared in a few scenes of the British jazz, beat film All Night Long, which starred Patrick McGowan and Richard Attenborough. Brubeck merely plays himself, with the film featuring close-ups of his piano fingerings. Brubeck performs, It's a Raggy Waltz, from the Time Further Out album and duets briefly with bassist Charles Mingus in Nonsectarian Blues. In the early 1960s Dave Brubeck was the program director of WJZZ-FM Radio. He achieved his vision of an all-jazz format radio station along with his friend and neighbor John E. Metz, one of the first African Americans in senior radio management. The final studio album for Columbia by the Desmond Wright Morello Quartet was Anything Goes featuring the songs of Cole Porter. A few concert recordings followed, and the last time we saw Paris was the classic Quartet Swan Song. Later career Brubeck produced The Gates of Justice in 1968, a cantata mixing biblical scripture with the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In 1971, the new senior management at Columbia Records decided not to renew Brubeck's contract, as they wished to focus on rock music. He moved to Atlantic Records. Brubeck's music was used in the 1985 film Ordeal by Innocence. He also composed for, and performed with his ensemble on, The NASA Space Station, a 1988 episode of the CBS TV series This Is America, Charlie Brown. Personal life Dave Brubeck married jazz lyricist Iola Whitlock in September 1942. The couple were married for 70 years, until his death in 2012. Iola died on March 12, 2014, from cancer in Wilton, Connecticut, at the age of 90. Four of Brubeck's six children have been professional musicians. Darius, the eldest, is a pianist, producer, educator and performer. Dan is a percussionist, Chris is a multi-instrumentalist and composer. Matthew, the youngest, is a cellist with an extensive list of composing and performance credits. Another son, Michael, died in 2009. Brubeck's children often joined him in concerts and in the recording studio. Brubeck became a Catholic in 1980, shortly after completing the Mass to Hope which had been commissioned by Ed Murray, editor of the National Catholic Weekly Our Sunday Visitor. Although he had spiritual interests before that time, he said, I didn't convert to Catholicism, because I wasn't anything to convert from. I just joined the Catholic Church. In 1996, he received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. In 2006, Brubeck was awarded the University of Notre Dame's Laetare Medal, the oldest and most prestigious honor given to American Catholics, during the university's commencement. He performed Trevelyan Blues for the graduating class of 2006. Brubeck founded the Brubeck Institute with his wife, Iola, at their alma mater, the University of the Pacific in 2000. What began as a special archive, consisting of the personal document collection of the Brubecks, has since expanded to provide fellowships and educational opportunities in jazz for students, 
also leading to having one of the main streets on which the school resides named in his honor, Dave Brubeck Way. The U.S. Library of Congress conducted a conversation with Brubeck in April 2008. Jazz Conversation. Pianist, composer Dave Brubeck. Recognition in 1975, the main belt asteroid 5079 Brubeck was named after Brubeck. Brubeck recorded five of the seven tracks of his album Jazz Goes to College in Ann Arbor. He returned to Michigan many times, including a performance at Hill Auditorium where he received a Distinguished Artist Award from the University of Michigan's Musical Society in 2006. On April 8, 2008, United States Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice presented Brubeck with a Benjamin Franklin Award for Public Diplomacy, for offering an American vision of hope, opportunity and freedom, through his music. As a little girl I grew up on the sounds of Dave Brubeck because my dad was your biggest fan, said Rice. The State Department said in a statement that, as a pianist, composer, cultural emissary and educator, Dave Brubeck's life's work exemplifies the best of America's cultural diplomacy. At the ceremony Brubeck played a brief recital for the audience at the State Department. I want to thank all of you because this honor is something that I never expected. Now I am going to play a cold piano with cold hands, Brubeck stated. California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and First Lady Maria Shriver announced on May 28, 2008, that Brubeck would be inducted into the California Hall of Fame located at the California Museum for History, Women and the Arts. The induction ceremony occurred December 10, and he was inducted alongside 11 other famous Californians. In 2008 Brubeck became a supporter of the Jazz Foundation of America in its mission to save the homes and the lives of elderly jazz and blues musicians, including those who had survived Hurricane Katrina. Brubeck supported the Jazz Foundation by performing in its annual benefit concert, A Great Night in Harlem. On October 18, 2008, Brubeck received an honorary Doctor of Music degree from the prestigious Eastman School of Music in Rochester, New York. In September 2009, the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts announced Brubeck as a Kennedy Center honoree for exhibiting excellence in performance arts. The Kennedy Center Honors Gala took place on Sunday, December 6, and was broadcast nationwide on CBS on December 29 at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When the award was made, President Barack Obama recalled a 1971 concert Brubeck had given in Honolulu and said, you can't understand America without understanding jazz, and you can't understand jazz without understanding Dave Brubeck. On September 20, 2009, at the Monterey Jazz Festival, Brubeck was awarded an honorary Doctor of Music degree from Berkeley College of Music. On May 16, 2010, Brubeck was awarded an honorary Doctor of Music degree from the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. The ceremony took place on the National Mall. On July 5, 2010, Brubeck was awarded the Miles Davis Award at the Montreal International Jazz Festival. In 2010, Bruce Ricker and Clint Eastwood produced Dave Brubeck, in his own sweet way, a documentary about Brubeck for Turner Classic Movies to commemorate his 90th birthday in December 2010. Death and Legacy Brubeck died of heart failure on December 5, 2012, in Norwalk, Connecticut, one day before his 92nd birthday. He was on his way to a cardiology appointment, accompanied by his son Darius. A birthday party concert had been planned for him with family and famous guests. A memorial tribute was held in May 2013. The Los Angeles Times noted that he was one of jazz's first pop stars, even though he was not always happy with his fame. He felt uncomfortable, for example, that Time had featured him on the cover before it did so for Duke Ellington, saying, it just bothered me. The New York Times noted he had continued to play well into his old age, performing in 2011 and in 2010 only a month after getting a pacemaker, with Time's music writer Nate Chinon commenting that Brubeck had replaced the old hammer and anvil attack with something almost airy, and that his playing at the Blue Note Jazz Club in New York City was the picture of judicious clarity. In the Daily Telegraph, music journalist Ivan Hewitt wrote, Brubeck didn't have the reclam of some jazz musicians who lead tragic lives. He didn't do drugs or drink. What he had was endless curiosity combined with stubbornness, adding, his work list is astonishing, including oratorios, musicals and concertos, as well as hundreds of jazz compositions. This quiet man of jazz was truly a marvel. In The Guardian, John Fordham said, Brubeck's real achievement was to blend European compositional ideas, very demanding rhythmic structures, jazz song forms and improvisation in expressive and accessible ways. His son Chris told The Guardian, When I hear chorale, it reminds me of the very best Aaron Copeland, something like Appalachian Spring. There's a sort of American honesty to it. Robert Christgau dubbed Brubeck the jazz hero of the rock and roll generation. The Economist wrote, Above all they found it hard to believe that the most successful jazz in America was being played by a family man a laid-back Californian, modest, gentle and open, who would happily have been a rancher all his days, except that he couldn't live without performing, because the rhythm of jazz, under all his extrapolation and exploration, was, he had discovered, the rhythm of his heart. The Concord Boulevard Park in his hometown of Concord, California, was renamed to, Dave Brubeck Memorial Park, in his honor. Mayor Dan Helix favorably recalled one of his performances at the park, saying, he will be with us forever because his music will never die.
While on tour performing, Hothouse in Toronto, Chick Corea and Gary Burton completed a tribute to Brubeck on the day of his death. Corea played, Strange Meadowlark, from Brubeck's album Time Out. Brubeck is interred at Umpawag Cemetery in Reading, Connecticut. In the United States, May 4 is informally observed as, Dave Brubeck Day. In the format most commonly used in the U.S., May 4 is written, five quarters, recalling the time signature of, Take 5, Brubeck's best-known recording. In September 2019, musicologist Stephen A. Christ's book, Dave Brubeck's Time Out, provided the first scholarly book-length analysis of the seminal album. In addition to his musical analyses of each of the album's original compositions, Christ provides insight into Brubeck's career during a time he was rising to the top of the jazz charts. A definitive biography of Brubeck, Dave Brubeck, A Life in Time, by the British writer Philip Clark, was published by Da Capo Press in the US and Headline Publishing Group in the UK on February 18, 2020. Dave Brubeck was among hundreds of artists whose material was reportedly destroyed in the 2008 Universal Studios fire.